Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to our playthrough of Dawn of the Zeds 3rd edition where we are playing the basic game. Okay, so we've done the introductory episode, just a quick refresher of where everybody is. All of our heroes are currently in the town centre, including the one I'm personally controlling. Well, I'm controlling the marble. This is my like sort of player character if you like that's captain piazza we also have sheriff hunt he's here we have deputy schmidt and we have mr johnson joining them in the town center we have a civilian unit with a strength of two and we also have a heroic civilian unit which is the farmingdale furies led by angelina fury and they've got a strength of six apart from these we also have five other civilian units. They are all based in small villages and towns outlying Farmingdale. So let's go through those. We have a unit at St. Thomas. All of these are defiant, by the way. Uh, this particular unit has got two strength at St. Thomas. On the mountain track at Lefty's Pass, we have a four strength unit. And on the mountain, on the highway track, we have a two strength unit at Ingerberg, and we have two civilian units on the suburbs track at East Irek. We've got a two strength unit, and at Bowville, we have a three strength unit. Up against them, for the moment, we have four regular Z units. So we have a six strength unit here on the forest track, we have a five strength unit here on the mountain track. We have an 8 strength unit here on the highway track and we have a 6 strength unit here on the suburbs track. So we are ready to go. So let's crack on and get on with our first phase in the basic game which will be the Zeds phase. And here we are at the Zeds phase and the first thing we've got to do is we've got to turn over our first event card so let's do that shall we and we have well armed civilians well that sounds pretty good actually so oh we've got some got some text here but it's part of the action phase as you can see it links to that tab so we've got to do the Zeds first before we actually read that so we've got movement on the forest track and the mountain track. So let's just do that. Here's the forest track. So this unit moves one to here. And the mountain track zombies move to there. So coolness. Right. So that is it for the Zeds phase, which is quite quick. So next up, we have the action phase. And here we are at the action phase. So let's have a read, shall we? So we get two actions. So we move our clapperboard up two. So we've got two actions that we can use. And let's just have a read of the text. Well, it's at the beginning of this phase, so we've got to do it straight away. Place the well-armed marker on any regular civilians unit in play. Until it ends up in the cemetery, that unit re receives a bonus right shift in all hand-to-hand -hand and gunfire combat. Cool. Not a bad start. So, I think it's these green ones. That's a bit, there we go. Well armed. So, there we go. And, yep, yeah, there we go. We've got a right bonus shift. Who are we going to give it to? Well, I've been thinking about tactics, and what I reckon is our, our main area that we've got to defend for as long as possible, apart from the town centre, is the Lucky Strike Mine. And the reason for that is that is the best place to find ammunition, and that's what we need. It's our resource in the basic game. So I think we will give the well-armed marker to these guys at Lefty's Pass. We want to try and stop the Lucky Strike Mine getting overrun for as long as possible, I think. So we're going to put that there. 
Okay, so we've done that. And don't think there's anything else to do on the card. No, so we'll discard that. Put the deck back here and we will carry on with the action phase. Right, oh, who's going to go first? I think Captain Piazza will go first, so let's go and have a look at her. And here we are with Captain Piazza. So first thing she's going to do is she's going to use the player action. So we'll flick that over so it's spent. And she's going to use that to move. She's going to go one, two, three, four, five to the lucky strike mine. Just have a quick look at her card. We see down here she's got a movement of five. So that's brilliant. So she's got all the way to the Lucky Strike Mine. For her second action, she's going to use one of these actions. Remember, we had two on the clapper board. So we're going to use one of those, and she's going to shoot. She's going to shoot at these guys. Now, she's shooting one, two. So she has an elite sniper ability. So at two spaces, she gets a strength of four. Brilliant. So let's have a look at the player aid. So she's got a strength of four. She'll be rolling two dice. So we'll be using this down here. Yep, this row, sorry, this column down here we'll be using. So the higher we get, the better. So let's give it a go, shall we? Here we are, let's get a couple of dice. Come on, Captain. And she gets a six. Not the best. So let's have a look. So for a six, she only gets one. So she only inflicts one damage, unfortunately. Also, it means that our ammunition goes down to six. And But we do get first blood. So we'll put a little damage marker... On these guys just so we know obviously we'd need two more hits to actually flip them over onto their wounded side so but we have got one damage on them which is cool so that is it for Captain Piazza next up let's go and have a look at Sheriff Hunt and here we are with Sheriff Hunt he's here in the town center now what he's going to do is he's going to use his special ability, which is leadership. Once per action phase, he may spend his leadership action marker to give one civilians or refugees unit in a space on or next to him one free action. And that is what he is going to do. He's going to give these guys a free action. So they're going to go one, two, and they're going to move down the highway track. The reason is we do have the eight strength zombie on that track. So let's bolster it up a tiny bit. So that is Sergeant Hunt's action. He's not going to do anything else apart from turn his leadership to spent. Right, next up will be Mr. Johnson. And here we are with Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson is going to use our final event action. So we're now at zero actions for events. And he is going to move. He's, he can move four, but he's only going to move three. He's going to go one, two, three to the campground. Now he could move four, but the reason is, and let's keep him on a named space. Uh, we don't know what the next card is going to be, whether we'll get a decent amount of actions. But the basic plan with him is to get him to the Lucky Strike Mine, because he's really good at foraging. So, if he can get up there, forage for ammunition. So, he can forage in a named space, like the campground. But we haven't got the actions for it at the moment. But rather than leave him in a sort of wilderness space halfway up the mountain where he can't forage at all, let's leave him here. Um, he can still, he couldn't get to the Lucky Strike Mine in one trip anyway. 
So if he's gonna like have to interrupt his trip there, he may as well interrupt it at the campground, I think. So he's gonna stay there. It does have a terrain marker as well. So that is pretty good. So he's done okay there. He's gonna stay at the campground. Next up is Deputy Schmidt. And here's Deputy Schmidt. And he is going to use his initiative token. So he's going to flip that. He's going to spend that. And he is going to go one, two, three, four to the nuclear power plant. The idea there is he is backing up the civilian units here because that is where the highest strength Z unit is coming from. Not that, <laughs> not that it will stay the highest strength Z unit as obviously when it comes round to next turn we're going to draw another event and we may end up with more Zs so and stronger ones but at the moment let's do that so the whole idea this phase was basically to secure the lucky strike mine because we need the ammunition and to send a few people to bolster the highway track where the highest strength Z unit was coming from so I think that that is it for the action phase so let's move into the housekeeping phase and here we are at the housekeeping phase so what are we going to do basically we just turn all of these action tokens over and that is it. That is the end of the housekeeping phase. And that is the end of turn one. So I'm going to leave it there. It's not a very long episode, but I'll let you into a bit of a secret. In Manchester, which is normally the rainiest place ever, it's absolutely roasting. And I don't mind admitting to you, I'm boiling to death. <laughs> so let's have a nice short episode for a change any mistakes please let me know please flag them up and uh, i'll see what i can do to fix them before the next episode uh, thank you so much for subscribing and for watching thanks so much for all the comments and all the support anybody's got any tactical tips for example you may be like tearing your hair out at this very moment watching this video going what the hell are you doing that for uh, they will be greatly received as ever so uh, once again thank you very much for watching and thanks to everybody who's gone across to board game links to upvote the site thank you very much so that was the first turn of dawn of the zeds third edition we'll see how it goes next turn i may do a couple of turns and run them together but for once i'm going to do a nice short video so i hope to see you next time for turn two of Dawn of the Zeds, third edition, where we play the basic game. But until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo!